The message of the Lord today is entitled, Life is Hard, God is Good, and Glory is Coming in that sequence. Now, this is a topic that's not commonly talked about in the body of Christ these days. But during the New Testament, in the time of Jesus and the apostles, this was such a powerful and pervasive uh, idea. They talked about it a lot. It was part of normal uh, life in following the Lord. So let's, uh, let's learn and let's allow the Lord to change us as, uh, in the process. We will be talking about suffering and glory. We will learn about how these things work together from agony to ecstasy, from gro groaning to glory, from suffering to exaltation. Okay, let's talk about these things. Let's begin with life is hard. Life is hard. You know, I'm talking about living for the Lord. Jesus said, when you follow him, when we follow him, it's like walking on the narrow road. It's not a majority you know, decision. That means most people in the world are not going this way. It's a minority of humanity that's going this way. Uh, one thing that you and I should expect as we follow the Lord is that there will be persecution. People will treat us badly because we are following Jesus Christ. Second Timothy 3.12 the Bible says, indeed, all who desire a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And I want you to notice the word all. Say all. I know it doesn't sound good. And, you know, I believe me, I do not want to make you feel bad for the sake of making you feel bad. It makes you feel bad too, you know, in the sense of realizing that the Lord really expects you and me to live for Him. And the Bible says when you really live for God... There will be people who will not like it. And they will say bad things. They will do bad things to us. There will be persecution. Because our lives of righteousness and holiness, not perfect, but we're seeking to live the right life, will expose the darkness in them. So for example, in the company, when we're talking about some things, and then they begin to propose ideas that are dishonest, untruthful, of course, as a Christian, it's the discussion, and you are expected by the Lord to say something for Him, okay? So you have to say, well, I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. I mean, this honesty is always not good. If it's done to us, we don't want that. So why do we do that to others? I think that should be erased. It should not be part of the, uh, the considerations and so on. And some people will hate us for that. Some people will criticize us for that. They, will, they might say, you know, if you're, if, if you're too honest, you're not going to make money, you know, you have to be shrewd, you have to be wise, you have to lie a little bit, exaggerate a little bit sometimes and so on. And some people will hate us for our honesty or our, um, you know, our desire to do what's right. But Jesus said that we should stand up anyway. John 3, 19, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever uh, does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. And I like to say that, you know, the Lord really wants you and I to stand up and live for Him. And if you are the type that you want everyone to please you, you want everyone to say good things about you, you want to be friends with everybody, you want everyone to be, you know, speaking good things about you, Jesus has some very sobering words for you. Luke 6, 26, woe to you. You're in deep trouble when all people speak well of you. And the emphasis is on the word all. For so their fathers did to the false prophets. You see, when you're standing up for God, you will not lie. You will not exaggerate. You will not cheat. You will not do dishonest things. You will not, you know, agree with the dance of the world. Not everyone will like you. And so the Bible says that if everyone likes you, something is not right. Something is not right. And the Lord wants to remind you and me that it is uh, something that will lead to trouble because there is actually a compromise. Uh, on the other hand, when we stand up for the Lord, there is the promise of great reward to those who are treated badly because they're following Jesus. Luke 6.22, Jesus backtrack a few verses. 
Again, Jesus said, blessed are you. Again, the word blessed here is a very strong word. Fortunate. Uh, you are happy. You are to be envied. You are so, so blessed when, you, when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. That's Jesus. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. You see, when you stand up for God, there will be great reward for you, but there will be a certain cost. But it's going to feel bad, but it's going to bring glory to you. Who among us here work out, or at least you're into a little bit of sports at least? Can you wave your hand? Okay? The others just like to eat. Okay? It's okay. Okay. All right. But you know, when you are into sports or exercise, your muscles feel sore after the workout. Murag maga, murag sakit, and so on. But you ask every doctor, and we know it even by experience, sore muscles, if your exercise is proper, sore muscles are a good thing because it means that you are, your muscles are getting stronger. Amen? So kahit na sumasakit yung iyong, iyong mga muscles, okay lang yan. Ibig sabihin, lumalakas ka. And if you're serious about getting stronger, like you're an athlete or you want to be healthy, that is a good, good thing. We should not suffer for our evil actions, for being arrogant, selfish uh, to people. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about suffering because we are living for God and we are doing good. First Peter 2.20 But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if, you are, uh, but if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. So we should not suffer because we are lazy, dishonest, we are like in the company, we're always late in submitting our reports. We always come to work late or etc. That should not be the reason. And yet when we're living for God, some people will not like that. In fact, they will hate us. Jesus said, John 15, 18 uh, onwards, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world... It will love you as its own, as it is you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Let me pause there and say, you know, I don't know, but you should never think that you're a better Christian than Jesus. That Jesus was persecuted, but you're better. You're more loving. You're more gentle than Jesus. You are more kind than Jesus. Therefore, everyone loves you. You should never think that way. Because if that's the way you live and think and act, you are probably compromising. And it is not good. Anyway, let's continue. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also, Jesus said to his disciples and to us. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. But this was to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. So people would not like that. But you should just stand your ground and keep doing what's right because that is the will of God. But some of our sufferings are just because of the broken world. The curse that's in creation. Romans 8, 22 and 23. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption of sons, the redemptions of our body. So the pollution in the air, in the water, and we get sick, contamination of the food. All of the floods because of the forests that are denuded. These are also the groanings of creation. And we are affected because we live in this world. That's part of it. But we are um, to endure that. And we are to look forward to our salvation, our adoption of sons. So don't demand an easy life. Don't run away from difficulties. Refuse to idolize comfort. You know, we live in a world that believes that this is the only life there is. And so their whole mindset is maximize pleasure. Eliminate discomfort. Dapat masaya lahat, comfortable lahat. Aircon lahat. Everything should be orderly. Everything should be, you know, um, just right uh, for you. But, you know, we know that there is a better life, a real life beyond this life. And that's what we are pursuing. Amen. Now, um, 
There are certain lessons of grace that can be learned only in the valley of pain and distress. Uh, a Christian who has suffered much and deepened his dependence on God is a sensitive soul full of compassion for others and with a deep love for his Savior. You know, the people who have experienced suffering, they are compassionate. They're humble. They're very easy to deal with. They are so understanding and gracious because nana sila they have been softened and tempered in the process. According to a legend, a king once passed, uh, placed a heavy stone in the roadway. Then he hid and waited to see who would remove it. Many who came by loud, loudly blamed the government for not keeping the highways clear. But none assumed the duty of pushing the obstacle out of the way. At last, a poor peasant stopped and rolled it into the gutter. To his surprise, he found a bag full of gold embedded in the road beneath the spot where the rock had been. A note said it was the king's reward for anyone who removed the troublesome object. In our lives, there are obstacles. There are hindrances. There are problems. There are things that are stressful to us. But beneath them is blessing. Beneath them is breakthrough. Beneath them is a reward from God. So life is hard, but let's keep going forward because there will be blessing for us. Amen? In, a mo in serving God, Pastor Leia and I, for example, uh, we seek to serve the Lord and we seek to really give our best. Sometimes, like for me, I would be honest, sometimes I feel weak, I feel tired. And now as we think about five services, I'll be like, wow, this is going to require a lot of energy and so on. But we keep going and we keep standing up for God because we know it will glorify the Lord and there will be great rewards up ahead. Amen. All right, let's can we clap our hands to the Lord. Thank you, God. Okay, life is hard, but God is good. Can we say that? God is good. All right, suffering for Christ is not an evil thing. When we suffer, it doesn't mean that God is bad. The pain we experience because we are following Christ is not inconsistent with the goodness of God. So don't think that if you're suffering, it's because God is bad. Okay, you know, funny with people is when things are good, we take credit. Ako ba ni? Ako yung nagbuhat, ana? Okay, kay kay, ako mana. Pero pung problema, discomfort, we blame God. <laughs> if it's good, it's about it's because of us. If it's bad, it's because of God. No, 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 no. That's not the right way. Okay, God remains to be good. God is good, as we say all the time. In fact, suffering can be seen as a gift from God because suffering makes us more like Him in our character. And because suffering brings us closer to Him. Philippians 1.29 For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in Him but also suffer for His sake. So God's gift is that we believe in Him and are saved. God's gift as well is that we suffer and we are matured or transformed in the process. Amen? Alright, one of the Things we should remember is that God is good and faithful in our suffering. He is a faithful creator. Uh, 1 Peter 4.19, Therefore let those who suffer according to God's will will entru uh, entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. But you know, all of these things are working together for us. Ayog yod kahadlok, ayog yod give up. Romans 8.28, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose, for those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. So, sabi ni Lord, well, I have a wonderful son, my one and only son, Jesus, and He brings so much joy to me. I want more sons, so I, want, I will adopt human beings and I will transform them, and they will become my children as well. And there will be many children, Jesus Christ becoming the firstborn or the eldest. And the whole of creation uh, uh, and experience of history is for that purpose. No, so when we suffer, gina persecuta, you know, standing up for God is, uh, is, is not easy. It's not easy. And I know some of you, some of your family don't like you doing what you're doing for the Lord. Some of your friends are laughing at you and saying, what, 
ano na nangyari sa iyo? You've lost your mind. It's all. But keep believing. Keep you know, standing up. Keep fighting for your faith. Because though life is hard, following the Lord is hard. God is good. Amen. 1 Peter 1.6 In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You see, one of the great things about suffering is that they refine our faith. And our faith that is refined, the Bible says, is more precious than gold. It's more valuable than anything there is in this world. You know, I like what F.B. Mayer wrote. He was writing about a bar of iron, one block of iron, bakal. A bar of iron worth $2.50, so $2.50 lang, when wrought into horseshoes, is worth $5. If made into needles, it is worth $175. If uh, in, made into pen knife blades, it is worth $1,625. Dollars. So from 250, 2.5, mahimong 1,625. If made in the springs for watches, para sa mga relo, it is worth 125,000 dollars. What a trial by trial by by fire that bar must undergo uh, to be worth this. But the more it is processed and the more it is hammered and passed through the heat. Beaten, pounded, and polished, the greater its value. Amen? Kaya, yung dinadaanan natin, kailangan daanan lang para the genuineness of our faith will come out because our genuine, proven faith is more precious than gold. Amen? And then, maganda yung write-up nila. This was in the Our Daily Bread, actually. Christian, are you wondering about the trials through which you are passing? With impatient heart, are you saying, How long, O Lord? The heat of the flame and the blows of the hammer are necessary if you are to be more than an unpolished rough bar of iron. God's all-wise plan, though it calls for the fire, produces the valuable watch spring of maturity. His very best for your life has behind it His perfect timing. Amen? Can you please tell someone beside you, relax ka lang. Sabi mo sa kanya, God is refining your faith. Amen. There was a shipwreck and there was only one survivor. The only survivor of that shipwreck was, was washed up on a small uninhabited island. Naginusara lang siya dito in taon. He cried out to God to save him. And every day he would scan the horizon for help, but none seemed forthcoming. Exhausted, he eventually managed to build a rough hut, gamay nga bahay kubo, and put his possessions in it. But then one day, after hunting for food, he arrived home to find his little hut in flames, the smoke rising up to the sky. Nasunog iyang bahay kubo. The worst that happened, he was stung with grief. Kumbaga, Siya lang nag-inosara dito, trying to survive. And now he has this little house at least that can protect him and give him some comfort. Now it's burned up. It's on fire. And he could not save it. Early the next day, however, a ship, Osaka Barco, drew near the island and rescued him. How did you know I was here? He asked the crew of the ship. We saw your smoke signal, they replied. Wow! What he thought was a tragedy was his salvation. Amen. God is saving our souls. Amen. Though it may not seem so for now, your present difficulty may be instrumental to your future happiness. Amen? And you may say, I, you know, my family is so, ah, oh, no, they hate me because I'm a follower of Jesus. My friends... You know, I don't have any friends anymore. They don't want me because I'm a follower of Jesus. Or whatever it is you're going through. The Bible saying that there is a purpose for that. And yes, life is hard. But God is good. And glory is coming. 
Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord. And that's the next point. Glory is coming. Suffering and glory, they come together. They're like partners like kape at pandisal. Or litson at kinilaw. Or whatever. I don't know what you like. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Okay. But anyway, uh, when we willingly take suffering, when they come and we overcome by the grace of God, then the Lord will you know, reward us and give us His glory. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17, the verse that's on the cover of the newsletter today. So we do not lose heart. We do not give up. Our outer self, our bodies, our souls, is wasting away our inner self, our spiritual life. is being renewed day by day for this light momentary or temporary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are transient but the things that are unseen are eternal and one of the things that you really need to develop as a follower of Jesus is to see beyond the present and to see beyond the obvious and the visible. And to see that God is preparing something. Not only that, you are investing something. And you will be rewarded for that. So sabi niya, yung light at temporary affliction. Ano ang kabalita na nun? Wait. Eternal glory. Light momentary affliction will be replaced by an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Amen? That's why, let's clap our hands to the Lord. You know, I don't want to sound, you know, spiritual, super spiritual, or whatever, because I may not even be able to do it when the right time comes, but I'm willing to suffer for the Lord. You know, sometimes we think of mission and say, okay, go to Myanmar and they, the police will imprison us and so on. I, I don't know, but at least I'm willing. I'm willing to go through that. I'm willing to risk that. I'm willing to be killed for the Lord. Now, hopefully I will not backslide when that happens, but I will try. I'm, I, I'm seeking to honor the Lord because when you are willing, hopefully it does not come, but when it comes, then we just take it because it will result to glory. Amen. The story is told of a woman who once showed the famous art critic John Ruskin a costly handkerchief on which a blot of ink had been dropped. The handkerchief was ruined, complained the woman, and nothing was left to do except to throw it away. Ruskin said nothing, but took the handkerchief with him. Not long afterward, the woman received it back, but it was so changed, she could hardly believe it was the original. Using the blot as a basis, Ruskin had created around it a beautiful and and artistic design changing what was ruined into a thing of beauty and joy. So you may say, ah, daot na na boy. My family doesn't like me anymore. My friends don't like me. Other people don't like me, etc. Just keep doing it because that blood of ink, God is able to do something with that to create something of great beauty and joy. Amen? Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, 17 and 18. And if we are children of God, then heirs. We are heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with Him, in order that we may also be glorified with Him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Yes, you're suffering now. Yes, there are you know, things to give up. You know, um, Pastor Lee and I, we think about life and we realize that there are things that we are giving up. You know, there are things that we have already decided, you know, this thing is secondary to us. Some things that we like to do, we enjoy doing, you know, but it's just something that we just have to say, okay, if it's, it is to be my offering to the Lord, so be it, I give it up. Because I know that there is a reward that is incomparable, that is coming. Amen. Jesus said, Matthew 5, 10 and 11, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. If they say, Bay, naunsa naman ka. Uh, why are you so extreme about this religious thing? Or your family will say, well, you choose. You want that Jesus? Then get out of this house. We will not send you to school if you're, 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 a, you're a student and so on. And your people will, will be bad. Some, not all. But when they're bad, you stand up anyway and you keep living for Jesus. Amen? Because there are many rewards that are coming. Praise the Lord. And now let's go to the last point, which is that accept suffering for Christ. Rejoice as you grow, go through it, knowing which rewards are waiting for you in heaven. Amen. So naatay agian na ay mga mahitabo, nga dili na to, you know, something that not, we are not proud of in a, in, in a way, but we just go through it because it's what's involved in following the Lord. 2 Timothy 2, 3. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And as I was preparing, I was saying, God, what should I write? What should I put in? What should I say? And the Lord said, say that. Because, you know, I'm afraid that there are so many Christians that are so weak in their stand, so weak in their faith, so easily shaken by what's happening. Nalay ni katawa sa iya, ni reject sa iya. Mura na sa, you know, giunsa, gi torture or whatever. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Can you say that to someone beside you? Share in suffering as a good soldier of Jesus. Come on, would you please do that? Amen. And one of the, uh, one of the things that we really need to see is that suffering is like a badge. It's like a certification that you really belong to God. It is a high privilege that we should treasure and rejoice in instead of hide or run away from. Acts 5.40 And when they, that's the, the, the religious leaders of, uh, of the first century, called in the apostles, they beat them, gilati gosila, and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer this honor for the name. And I would like to say, if, if to you that is like a weird thing, you would say, well, they must be crazy. I like to say, think about it. Maybe we're the ones who are crazy. Maybe they understood something. That these sufferings are nothing. But your suffering is also an investment for eternity. You save your life now, you lose it there, my friend. You lose your life now, you find it there, my friend. You give up something little here, you get it so much multiplied. hundred times, you hold on to it, you lose all of it. Nothing here, nothing there. It's a terrible thing. And the Bible says, that's why the Apostle Paul, if only for this life we live, we are of all men, all men most miserable. We give up something here, there's nothing in the future, but we give up anything here because there's so much up, out there in the future. Amen. Um, accept suffering and persecution. Don't resist it. Don't resent it. Revelation 2.10, do not fear what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He was in here, let him hear. But the Spirit says to the churches, the one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. You have to conquer, my friend. And so maybe today some of you are being severely persecuted. Think of yourself as like a pregnant woman. A pregnant woman who is, you know, pregnant with something, that, that, with a baby, that woman is in pain. But he, or she endures. She's willing to go through it. You know why? Because the experience of having a child is far more valuable and full of joy than the suffering could ever, could ever inflict on her. So for a mother, for a, for a woman... Okay lang na, you know, grabe akong ginagaya, nag ko and so on. Because the birth of a child will erase it all. Same is true spiritually. The Lord is working in us and he, we are about to give birth into glory. Amen. In 1962, Victor and Mildred Goatsell published 
a revealing study of 413 famous and exceptionally gifted people called Cradles of Eminence. Now, these, these people include Thomas Edison. It includes the Wright brothers who invented the airplane. It includes uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, it includes Mohandas Gandhi. It includes Mother Teresa who served in Calcutta and did so much good for people. It includes so many great men and women. You know, and, and how, the study was about creators of eminence. What made them, uh, what, you know, what they became. They spent years attempting to understand what produced such greatness. And they published it in the book. What common thread might run through all these outstanding people's lives. Surprisingly, the most outstanding fact was that virtually all of them, 392, had to overcome very difficult obstacles in order to become who they were. So they became great, not because everything was rosy and easy and everyone was supportive and all things are just so positive. They went through so much, but what they went through produced something in them and produced the greatness out of their lives. Amen? And we are still benefiting from what they did for humanity because they were willing to suffer and go through it and they eventually overcame. Amen? As we close this message, can we have the musicians now? I want to encourage you. You may be going through something. Yes, life is hard. Living for the Lord is not easy. But God is good. God will sustain you and glory is coming. God will renew everything for you and God will richly, richly reward you. Amen? Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Can we all stand and pray in the remaining minutes we have? Can we all stand as we come before the Lord in prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you today that yes, living for you is tough. Living for you, Lord God, is not easy. Sometimes we really, really get hurt. Sometimes, you know, we don't like it when people say bad things, when people laugh at us, make funny jokes now, but they are hurtful jokes against us. But Lord, we say you are good. You are a faithful creator. And we, Lord, believe and we declare that glory is coming. Glory is coming. Glory is coming. Rewards. Great rewards are waiting for us in heaven. So God, we come in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord God, to help us right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right now, if you're going through suffering for the Lord, now, right now, just talk to God. Just receive encouragement from the Lord. God, we pray call for those who are standing up for you. Strengthen them. Uphold them, God. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are here and you're suffering and you are about to give up. The Lord is saying, don't give up. Don't give up. Glory is coming. The light momentary afflictions will, they are producing for you an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Lord, we thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, comfort us, strengthen us. We are willing to go forward to do what's right. We are willing, Lord God, Lord, to honor you in life or death. For to live is Christ, to die is gain. We are willing to suffer if, if it's needed. If, it's not, if, if that's not come, then well and good. If it comes, we gladly accept it. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Renew our minds and change our hearts. Make us strong and bold. Make us committed and surrendered to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, the Lord and Savior, as the Lord and Savior of your life, He is Lord and Savior, but if He is not Lord and Savior to you, then today, God brought you here so you can have the opportunity to surrender your life to Him. Would you surrender your life to Jesus? Would you tell Him, Lord, I don't know, but I just, I just know I need to give my life to you. I just know that my life is not moving in the right direction. I just know I'm not acceptable before you because though I try to do good, I still do bad and I have not reached the holy standard of God. But Jesus, would you forgive me? Would you come into my heart? Jesus, you are my God. Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me. Change me. Heal me and set me free. Jesus, come. Restore me. Forgive me. Set me free. I give my life to you. I trust you. Not religion. Not good works. 
but you alone Jesus I give my life to you come on would you do that today if you know dili ta may mga relasyon sa Ginoo wala pa ni maghihatag ito kay Boy sa Ginoo ni Jesus ihatag karon tingnan sa Lord forgive me and God I surrender my life to you be my Lord be my boss be my savior beginning today I will live for you you are the one I will follow not myself you are the one I will follow and I will live for you not for me and I trust in Jesus not religion not goodness you are my, you are my God I am no other God but you I surrender my life come on would you pray that to the Lord today if you know you need to make that decision if you know you need to make that prayer thank you Lord Right now, if you have a need or prayer request, like financial, or for your work, your business, your studies, would you please raise your hand right now if you have a prayer request or a need. And we will ask the Lord, and He will bless you. Father in heaven, we pray, bless your people, Lord. God, we pray, bless us financially. Lord, bless us in our families. Lord, bless us in our health. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, bless our work, our business, our studies. Bless our ministries, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Everyone raise your hands to receive the final blessing as we are now closing this worship celebration. Raise your hands and receive the blessing of the Lord. And now the Lord bless you and protects you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and the lord bless you with his peace as you honor the lord as you obey the lord you will be the head and not the tail you will be above and not beneath you will be the lender and not the borrower you will be blessing the home and outside of the home and the works of your hands will be blessed so Father in heaven, we go now with joy because we know you are with us and you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And Lord, we declare that regardless of our age or our situation right now, by faith we declare and shout it out, the best days of our lives are still ahead of us, not already behind us. The best is yet. To come. So Lord, we honor you and we will live for you. We'll win souls and make disciples. We will love God and love people. We'll honor you. We'll suffer if need, need be so that we will receive your glory. Thank you, Lord. We love you, God, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone would say, Amen and Amen. God bless everyone.